ship 36 has fallen, its explosion tearing through Massey and halting progress in an instant. Images of the aftermath now emerge, offering a clearer view of the damage and the challenge ahead. But the question is no longer just went wrong, it is how SpaceX moves forward. What is the state of Massey, and what must be done to recover and resume testing? Let us find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The Ship 36 incident remains a major shock for many, marking the first large-scale explosion we have seen at Starbase in quite some time. Following our previous update, we have now received a wave of new imagery that offers a more comprehensive view of the situation at the Massey test site. Thankfully, it appears that all immediate hazards have been mitigated. The site is now considered safe for workers and inspectors to enter. However, despite this positive step forward, the extent of the damage to several critical systems is unmistakably severe. To start, the test stand itself is in terrible condition. In one of the latest video captures, the damage is clearly visible. All signs indicate that the structure is beyond repair, and will need to be entirely replaced. Just beside it, the ship QD system also appears heavily exposed and stripped down, suggesting that it too may require major refurbishment or complete replacement. Moving outwards from the stand, additional damage becomes evident. A scorched horizontal tank can be seen at the far end near the test structure. Meanwhile, the steel support frames that run alongside the fuel lines have sustained visible harm. Not far from that area, a set of small tanks and a storage shed also show signs of being burned. Fortunately, there is no evidence of secondary explosions, and the nearby main fuel tanks seem to have remained intact. Debris is still scattered throughout the test site. One particularly large piece of wreckage is noticeable on the far side of the test stand, near the facility's drainage channel. This object could very well be a, f be a fragment from Ship 36 itself. In addition, the drainage system in that area shows signs of a recent fire alongside the accumulated debris. While it is unclear whether this was caused directly by the explosion or by routine testing residue over time, the system will clearly require a thorough cleaning. The effects of the blast also appear to have reached several adjacent systems. The side of the facility containing the test stand suffered the worst of it, with noticeable impact, in impact extending toward the office area and even reaching the vicinity of Test Tank 17's cage. That said, these zones are farther from the explosion site and seem to have sustained only minor damage. On the opposite side of the facility, which houses a large number of horizontal fuel tanks, the systems appear to have been spared entirely and remain in good condition. Cleanup operations have already begun. A crane was recently brought into the Massey area and crews have started cleaning, clearing debris. This first phase of recovery will create space for a more extensive refurbishment effort in the weeks ahead. Altogether, the situation has stabilized. While the damage is substantial, SpaceX is clearly moving quickly to assess, clean, and begin the process of rebuilding the Massey test site. The next phase in the aftermath of the Ship 36 incident will focus on cleanup, refurbishment, and finding workable solutions to resume operations. However, one major question now looms, what will SpaceX do about the critical systems that were damaged or destroyed during the explosion? These include the test stand, the ship quick disconnect, and the surrounding fuel pipe network. Let us start with the fuel pipeline systems. These lines are essential for delivering cryogenic fuel to the vehicle during tests, and after the recent explosion, a full rebuild will likely be necessary. Fortunately, SpaceX has considerable experience laying down such infrastructure, and based on previous repair timelines, this could potentially be completed within a few weeks if prioritized. Next, we have the test stand. It is obvious from recent imagery that the that the stand is beyond repair and will need to be replaced entirely. The new stand does not need to replicate the exact design of the previous one, but it must integrate with the rest of the test system and support the same operational requirements. Constructing a new one from scratch may take time, but some believe that SpaceX could accelerate the process by repurposing existing hardware. One suggestion is to temporarily relocate a test stand from Megabay 2 for use at Massey, though doing so might create bottlenecks in Megabay's ongoing operations. As for the ship QD system, there are rumors that SpaceX maintains at least one backup. If true, this could allow for a faster recovery. However, using this spare may deplete critical resources needed for other areas of Starbase and might disrupt work in progress on the next generation vehicles. 
The underlying strategy in all of this revolves around one key choice. Should SpaceX simply rebuild the damaged infrastructure to support the current Starship versions, or should it take this opportunity to begin transitioning to the newer version known as Starship V3? At first glance, Rebuilding the old test systems seems logical. It would allow SpaceX to continue testing and launching the remaining V2 prototypes, which include Booster 15, 16, and 17, along with Ship 37, 38, and 38. These vehicles are still viable and waiting for their turn in the launch queue. Rebuilding the test infrastructure for these existing vehicles would seem to offer the quickest path back to flight, but that solution may only be a temporary fix. When we take a closer look at the long-term strategy, several issues emerge. The number of remaining V2 prototypes is small. Rebuilding an entire test system for just a few remaining flights may not be the most efficient use of resources. Additionally, the V2 version of Starship has shown more issues over time, especially when compared to earlier flight history. Recent failures and the Ship 36 explosion further reinforce this pattern. Moreover, hardware constraints could present additional complications. The ship QD system appears to be based on older designs, possibly repurposed from the suborbital testing days. That makes backups limited, and using the one remaining unit could jeopardize progress in Mega Bay 2 or other facilities. This brings us to a bold but promising option, building a brand new test infrastructure specifically tailored to support Starship V3. Yes, making this shift would mean skipping the few remaining V2 vehicles, which could be seen as wasteful. And yes, building an entirely new test stand would likely require more time, pushing the next flight beyond July. But in return, SpaceX would gain a robust system designed to support the next chapter of Starship development. Starship V3 promises a major leap forward. This version includes a wide range of improvements across systems. The upgraded Raptor 3 engines, for example, are expected to offer significantly higher thrust while being simpler and more reliable. Fuel tanks, plumbing, hot staging mechanisms, and overall structure are also set to undergo major upgrades. These changes aim to increase performance, enhance safety, and reduce complexity across the board. Starship V3 will also be larger and more capable, making it a more suitable platform for critical missions such as in-space refueling, lunar landings, and even crewed Mars missions. In that sense, building a dedicated test stand for V3 is an investment that will support the program for many years to come. Progress on V3 has already begun. B-18, the first V3 prototype, is currently being stacked inside Mega Bay. Meanwhile, S-39 is expected to be the first V3 ship, and it is nearly ready to begin stacking now that S-36's loss has opened up space in the bay. Even if the remaining V2 prototypes are not flown, they may still serve a purpose. SpaceX could salvage useful parts, recycle sections for structural testing, or even modify them by cutting and extending segments, as the diameter between versions remains consistent. In the end, the decision will rest with SpaceX. Will they rebuild the old system to get V2 flying again quickly, or will they take the longer route and prepare for V3's debut? What do you think? Reply with 2 if you support rebuilding the V2 test system, or 3 if you believe SpaceX should move forward with V3. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following the exciting development journey of Starship. No matter which option SpaceX chooses, one thing is certain. The company will do everything it can to bring Starship back online as quickly as possible. That sense of urgency has defined SpaceX's entire approach to the Starship program this year. Although recent events have put key milestones just out of reach, such as achieving back-to-back -back monthly launches or breaking the turnaround speed record, the broader mission remains the same. SpaceX is still aiming to set a new high for the number of Starship flights within a single year. If the company manages to repair the Massey test site in July and conduct a launch in August, it'll mark the fourth Starship flight of 2025. This would equal last year's total and leave several more months for additional missions. Achieving even just one more successful launch by the end of the year would break the existing record and set a new milestone in the Starship program. But it is not just about the number of launches. Returning to flight quickly gives SpaceX more chances to complete a growing list of mission objectives. Several critical goals have still not been fully achieved in the first half of 2025. These include deploying payloads in orbit, successfully reigniting engines in space, 
perform and control to re-entries and landing both stages intact. Completing these steps will be essential before moving on to even more ambitious plans. Looking ahead, Flight 10 could serve as the mission to close out these incomplete tasks. If successful, it would pave the way for even more advanced tests in Flights 11 or 12. One of the biggest potential milestones could be attempting to catch the returning upper stage using Mechazilla's tower arms. That kind of recovery will demand a very high level of precision and reliability, standards that can only be met after nailing the fundamentals in earlier flights. Thanks to the progress made this year on infrastructure and hardware, 2026 already looks promising. Musk has emphasized the importance of developing the orbital refueling system, which will be a central focus moving forward. However, that system requires Starship to demonstrate consistent, repeatable performance. That means the remaining months of this year are crucial for validating Starship's core capabilities. SpaceX also has regulatory momentum behind it. The FAA has approved up to 25 Starship launches for 2026, giving the company a solid window to increase cadence and push the platform toward uncrewed demo missions to the moon and eventually Mars. Although the recent setback at Massey was a serious one, it does not necessarily spell disaster. In fact, the incident may become a catalyst for innovation. The damage has highlighted weak points in the testing infrastructure, but this could inspire SpaceX to apply better, more robust solutions that will strengthen the overall roadmap for Starship. Once the team identifies a clear solution, clear solution, we can expect to see them move quickly to implement it. The race to return Starship to flight is already underway, and the second half of 2025 could become one of the most transformative periods yet in the program's history. So stay tuned, because Starship's most exciting milestones may still be just around the corner. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.